Okay, welcome back. Talking to Dr. Rodney Soto about working with Gulf residents who are, are clearly headed toward catastrophic health issues in the years to come. We're going to talk more about what can be done. I'm going to go back just a little bit to some of the issues he mentioned right before the break. Some of the many toxins. Benzene, he mentioned. Now, we'll just talk about benzene. Benzene, of course, is one of the most highly carcinogenic compounds that we come into contact with in our lives, period. It's, it's unbelievably dangerous. I remember early, doctor, one and I think it was a Louisiana television station, did a report where they actually had a good early read on the air quality along the Gulf Coast. And the supposed safe levels of benzene are one to three parts per million. I, although I would disagree, I don't think there are any safe levels of benzene. That's correct. But the, you yeah, know, well, that's the feds for you. The, uh, the test results in the air that were coming back were somewhere between 50 and 100 parts per million. They were way up there. And I said to myself, right then and there, that's the last time we're going to hear about the air quality in the Gulf, and I have, to this day, not seen any adequate follow-up to that report. That's true. Uh, we have heard of those reports. There was also another one from Pensacola and then New Orleans. Uh, not just benzene, but also hydrogen sulfide in the right. thousands of parts per billion. So we're talking about huge levels. If you talk to environmental doctors, uh, any levels of any toxins are not acceptable, whether it's a tiny amount or one part per billion or 0.5 right. is toxic. So right. We're talking about several full higher levels, thousands of thousands of parts per billion there in, in the Gulf Coast. The government knows precisely what it's doing. Uh, they're not stupid. They're lying. And they are actually killing American citizens yeah, by their children, negligence. Children are very susceptible, or I would say more susceptible, to the effects of the petroleum derivatives because of their uh, liver detox capabilities is less than an adult. Uh -huh. Their brain is also developing and their immune system is developing. Right. So they're going to be affected several fold more than an adult that being exposed to the same amount of toxins. How would you describe the vectors for these poisons to get into children, for example? Obviously the air. Okay, there's one. What other vectors are you working on and, and identifying? Well, the skin is another very common one. Uh, if they're being uh, to the beach or just playing in the sand. They can dig a little bit under the surface and they can see already the, the darker, uh, you know, petroleum type oh, of sure. color. Yep. Yep. So the skin is another frequent one. And then, of course, the GI tract, because we're talking about shrimp, we're talking about fish, seafood, oysters, you name it. Any food from the, from the Gulf that is already being distributed in restaurants and nationwide, that's going to be the most detrimental and most fearful way to get these compounds. Yet another astonishing crime this government has committed by clearing the seafood, obviously tainted to be consumed by people. They, they just don't care about human life. There's no other way to define it. They don't care. It's all about cover-up. It's all about money. It's all about keeping them looking good and keeping the people in the dark. Now, we also talked about the human body. And I wanted to ask, where does the human body, beside the liver and kidneys and so forth, secrete or hide away toxins that can't be eliminated? Do they go to the fat cells like many toxins do? Are these, is this the kind of a thing? And if they do go to the fat cells, th therein lies one certain vector for eventual cancer because these things accumulate and concentrate in the fat cells and then you have genetic damage and, and mutagenic cell growth. That's, that's a very important point. These compounds are fat-soluble, and when we're talking about the fat in the body, we're just not talking about the fat under in our bellies or places that we don't like them, but rather critical organs in our systems that are lipid-based or they are made of fat, such uh -huh. as the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain is 70% of fat, then you have the glands, like the thyroid. Then you have the brain the, is 70% fat? The brain is 70% fat. The adrenal wow. glands, the thyroid gland, the immune system is made of fat. Even the gut cells, the intestinal tract is made of fat. The prostate, the breast. So now you, you're going to see cancers in these precious organs. And of mm -hmm. course, brain is going to happen a, a lot of uh, what is called excitotoxicity and destruction of brain cells. Uh-huh. 
in not just cancer, of course, but Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALA, ALS, seizures, strokes, all form of brain dysfunction from this excitotoxicity triggered by activating the uh, brain cells microglia from these compounds. Absolutely catastrophic, and no one, ladies and gentlemen, is talking about it. Thank God uh, Dr. Rodney Soto and others are trying to help. We'll address the issue of detoxification as we continue and other things in just a few minutes. I right now have a 16-year-old who is a, an extremely healthy young man at one time. He went swimming at the Gulf Shores Public Beach on August 30th. He's been hospitalized. The hospital told him he has a compromised lung. Um, he has a major upper respiratory. He has an over-enlarged heart. He has high blood pressure. This is a healthy child that went swimming at a beach that supposedly is, is okay to go swimming in. And now he has high blood pressure to tack on that, and they told him he was depressed and gave him a shot and sent him home. I was crippled when the oil hit the beaches. And now my lungs are crippled. They found chemicals in my bloodstream. 